What's going on guys? Thank you for watching Wild Fed Family. And at the time that I'm filming this video, it's probably about six to seven weeks by the time that early archery season opens up here in middle Georgia. Now, one of the things that I like most about deer hunting is the conservation work that goes along with it. And that's a little bit of what I'm gonna do. Um, but this video in general is about what I do for deer season prep. So I'm gonna go into food plot prep. I'm gonna talk about what cameras I use when I set them and uh, a little bit about the attractants that I use to kind of take inventory of the deer that I have out there in the woods. Another thing that I'm gonna talk about is checking tree stands, tree stand safety, setting up feeders, um, checking trails, etc. So everything that I do before I get into tree stand is uh, there's gonna be a little bit of every bit of that in this video. So keep on watching and uh, I'll show you what I do to have a successful season here in Georgia. Now I'm actually sitting here on the zero turn mower and I have two food plots that I planted in February. Um, I'm gonna go out, knock those down, and uh, but I gotta ride, I don't know, a couple hundred yards down the road, get to the property, and I'll see you there. All right, so I made it out to this right of way and it's basically an old power line that goes back to an unserviced building and uh, this is my main access point for the property um, it is also a great spot to sit and hunt i get a little ways from the road I have a ground blind that i'm going to set up and a feeder that's a couple hundred yards from the road and uh, you know deer are constantly crossing through here so one of the things that i want to do is make sure stuff like these blackberries and all of this is actually very small little pine trees that are coming up and some oak trees all the real brushy stuff that's going to cause all of this to you know not get enough sunlight for my food plot seed to grow um i want to knock down and uh, that's pretty much it so it's too early too hot and too dry to put anything down um but back in february i planted um wheat barley right um and clover and that clover is a perennial so whatever's left over i'm just gonna knock it down and it's gonna keep on growing keep on coming back year from year and uh come fall time when it's right time to uh you know plan again um i'm gonna have all this prepped so i'm gonna jump on the mower i'm gonna keep the blade set at high and for those of you who are thinking why am I doing my food plot maintenance with a zero turn mower? Well, it's because it's doable. You just have to be consistent with it. Now, by consistent, I mean once a year. If I skip that and let it grow up, then yeah, I'll probably have to break out the big guns, come in here with the bush hog, but don't let that happen. Don't get to that point, and you can manage your food plots with the yard equipment that you have at home. So I'm halfway done here, and uh, you can see what I'm talking about. I'm just knocking it down, and it just looks cleaned up and you're allowing all that undergrowth and whatever seed you put down in the past to uh, get some sunlight and maintain that root system before it dies off. So I'm gonna keep on going. I have probably three more acres of this to do, but that's all I have on food plot prep. Um, and uh, yeah, it's ready for me to plant whenever the timing, the weather, the temperature, etc., is right. So. Uh, Let's move on to the next thing because I have plenty more things to show you. Now it's another day and I am at a location a couple hundred yards behind the house and I have a few things up my arsenal in my, I have, I have a few tricks up my sleeve that are going to help me locate some deer and uh, get some great pictures. So check this out. So a couple months ago, I put one of the 4S mineral blocks out here, and this is what's left of it. You can see the deer have really gotten into it and uh, have sort of walled out a hole here. Um, I've found that in the springtime, um, they're, they go a little heavy on the mineral, um, but right now, I'm gonna use a salt heavy block that I get from Tractor Supply, which is you know roughly 95% salt, and uh, it's a little more dense and it lasts me throughout the season. So I'm just gonna run that, set it right here where the deer have already found this mineral site.
The next thing is going to be lathering that salt block down with a feed grade molasses. Now you can get this at Tractor Supply, you can get it in Walmart in the deer feeder section, um, just about anywhere, just cattle molasses. Well, now that molasses has a nice sweet smell that's going to go drifting through the woods, I'm going to break out the big guns and uh, give them something that they're really going to love. So you've probably seen me use this in my other videos, and that is because it works. So I'm going to take some of this 4S draw, I'm going to sprinkle it on top. So what you just saw me put on there was like two pounds roughly and it comes in a 25 pound bag. Now I have 11 different blinds slash stands, hunting locations, camera settings that I need to do. So that bag is gonna last me all the way through this locate period over the next couple weeks, draw the deer in and they're gonna keep on coming to the salt lick. And uh, yeah, I'll be able to see who's here hanging out and who I'm gonna pursue in the next couple weeks. But none of that does me any good if I don't have a camera on them. Now, this is just a cheapo Tasco camera from Walmart. And um, I want to say it costs $25 to $30. Takes AA batteries, just standard SD card. And um, I'll just set it up on the tree. Now, you do have to come out here and check the SD cards. And typically, I'll do that when I hunt. I always have a fresh card with me. Um, I'll come out here, swap the SD card, get in the stand, blind, whatever I'm hunting out of and uh, look over cameras and that's how I check them rather than spending all day just making a ruckus through the woods checking all my cameras. Now I want to switch eventually to the cell cameras uh, specifically the tact cam reveals um, but I'm getting there. These are a uh, economical you know, option that just about anybody can afford to use. That's why I use it and I will have at least a dozen of these at the house so I'm not going to uh, you know, waste what I have. This is an option, it's going on the tree. Only 10 more to go. I'll see you back in a bit. Now, another thing that I like to do in the preseason is go ahead and put out any sort of ground blinds. Now in an open area like this, um, where the sun is beating down on it, I really have to take these things up once a year and put them out about five to six weeks before the season starts. Because here in middle Georgia, the sun is absolutely hellacious and the wasp, the snakes, the spiders, they make home of it. And I really don't want that when I get in my blind first of the year. So. Here I am, I'm gonna set up this ground blind. So I'm gonna make sure the deer get a little bit acclimated to this and this blind is going to be in good shape in about five, six weeks when I come out here to bow hunt it. All right, so we got a fun little day today. And um, one of the other things that I'm gonna be doing is putting out some feeders and here in Georgia, it is legal. so. I'm definitely gonna do it. I loaded it up. We rode, I don't know, 15 minutes down the road to another piece of property. I already brought the corn back there, um, but I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the salt block and the 4S draw, stick it up underneath there, and being that this property is a little bit of ways, I'm gonna put a cell camera on it. You wanna press it? All right. Now, there has been one major change since the last time that I was out here, and that, when I was pulling up, I realized that there's some hogs out here, and um, I've never seen any sign of them, um, but they found it now. So, I wasn't uh, turning the feeder on and running the feeder, but because we got the hogs here, I might draw them in and uh, do a little damage control. 
So like I said earlier, I did not plan on putting the battery in and actually turn this feeder on for like another four weeks. But since I have signs of hogs, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it running. So I just uh, got it filled up, tested, battery hooked up, and over here I got the cell camera hooked up, ready to go. Blind is ready to go. So as of now, we are ready for early archery season. So I actually have one more feeder to set up and uh, I'm gonna go back to my house and it's the property right behind it. So um, I'm gonna work on that, but that feeder actually got two of them yesterday. They were on sale at Academy. They're the game winners and they hold 200 pounds of corn on sale for 89 bucks. So if you uh, see an Academy and you're in need of a feeder, stop on by. I mean, it's a pretty sweet deal that you don't find too often. All right, so one more quick tip. When you do set up feeders, I like to program to feed in the morning. So this one is roughly half hour after sunrise, it's gonna go off. And um, it's only go going off for three seconds. I just want a light feed, um, not, not anything too heavy. I'll bump it up a little bit when the weather starts getting warmer and after the, or colder and the acorns have already finished dropping. Um, but that's not necessary right now. The reason you want to feed in the morning is that that food is available all day rather than feeding at night and uh, almost pushing your deer to become nocturnal. So just feed in the morning and uh, give them plenty of feed. They have all day to feed on it. And if they want to let it sit there all day until you know, let the squirrels, raccoons, everything else get it, then so be it. But um, you almost want to encourage them to feed during the daylight hours. So there's one last piece of this puzzle and that's something that oftentimes gets overlooked and that is tree stand safety, checking your tree stands, making sure on your ladder stands that none of the uh, steps are rusted out, um, all your bolted connections are good to go, and mainly your ratchet straps, not only on your ladder stands, but your lock-on stands. And um, I always keep a ratchet strap in my backpack, so I do a visual inspection from the ground um, during the preseason, but when I go up there to hunt it, I have that ratchet strap readily available and by the time that my lock-on stand goes through its entire life cycle I probably have six seven ratchet straps around there as they deteriorate put one more on cut the old one off so be safe with the tree stands always keep a ratchet strap in your backpack that's what I do that's what seems to work um, always have one readily available and if you're questioning whether or not it's good just go ahead and put one on you can get a four pack of them at Lowe's for 20 bucks so you'll thank me later but if you like this kind of content, thank you for watching. Keep on watching and um, you know, go ahead and subscribe and I'll keep more of this stuff coming. And I'm really looking forward to deer season and I'm going to have a lot of great videos coming for you as well. So for now, I'm done and uh, I'm going to wait till deer season kicks in. See ya.